Hello, welcome to part 28 of Clinical Physiotherapy MCQ series. Here, we will be discussing day-to-day -day clinical scenarios with detailed explanation. Let's move to our question number 136. A 48-year-old female sustained a fracture to her left shoulder. Treatment is proceeding well expected that the left shoulder flexion. You notice the scapula protract and elevate early and it continues to move excessively. Physical therapy intervention should emphasize Option A, glenohumeral immobilization and strengthening of scapula stabilizer to regain normal scapulohumeral movement. Option B, glenohumeral mobilization and strengthening of rotator cuff muscle to regain the muscle balance. Option C, scapulothoracic mobilization and strengthening of the pectoralis major and minor muscle to regain normal scapulohumeral rhythm. Option D, stretching of the scapula stabilizer and strengthening of pectoralis major and minor muscle to regain muscle balance. And the answer is Option A, glenohumeral mobilization and strengthening of the scapula stabilizer to regain normal scapulohumeral movement. Explanation to this question is glenohumeral mobilization and strengthening of scapula stabilizer to regain normal scapulohumeral movement. Compensation of the glenohumeral restriction if often exhibited as excessive scapular movement. Therefore, mobilization of glenohumeral joint and strengthening of scapula stabilizer is needed to regain normal scapular humeral motion. Now let's move to question number 137. A patient has transtibial amputation and has recently been fitted with PTB socket. During your initial prosthetic checkout, you instruct the patient to walk several times in the parallel bars. You then have to sit down and take the processes off. You inspect the skin. You would expect no redness in the area of the Option A. Anterior tibia, tibial crest and the fibular head Option B. Petalar tendon and tibial cruberosity Option C. Medial tibial and fibular plateau Option D. Distal end of the residual limb And the answer is Option A. Anterior tibia, tibial crest and fibular head Explanation to this question is anterior tibia, tibial crest and the fibular head. In the PTB socket, relief are provided for pressure sensitive areas. The anterior tibia and the tibial crest, fibular head and the peroneal nerve, all other choices are considered pressure tolerant areas. Now let's move to question number 138. A female patient with cervical disc disorder is ordered to have a cervical siding device, a form of cervical traction. Which of the following demonstrate the correct technique of applying this type of traction? Option A. The patient head is placed against a padded hard wrist with the neck extended. Option B. The patient's head is attached to the system that provides a pull in the cephalic direction. Option C. Initially, start with a force from 20 to 30 pounds. Option D. The device is placed on the back of the skull and under the mandible and the straps are secured to ensure that the force is applied to the occipital area and the answer is Option B The patient's head is attached to the system that provides a pull in the cephalic direction Explanation to this question is The patient's head should be attached to the system that provides a pull in the cephalic direction Cephalid is going towards the head. The head of the patient should be placed against the heart rest with 20 to 30 degree of cervical flexion. The treatment must start with a low force of 10 to 15 pounds, gradually increasing to 20 to 30 pounds. A cervical halter is placed on the back of the skull and under the mandible. Cervical sliding device involves securing a head strap across the forehead and a beam under the mastroid process. Now let's move to question number 139. What lobe of the leg is the therapist attempt to drain if the patient is following position? Resting on the left side, toward 1 by 4 turn back, support with pillow, and the foot of the bed raised 12 to 16 inches. Option A, right middle lobe ilingula segment. Option B, left upper lobe lingula segment. Option C, right upper lobe posterior segment. Option D, left upper lobe posterior segment. And the answer is Option A. Right middle lobe lingula segment. Explanation to this question is Choice B is drained by resting on the right one fourth turned the back, 
and the foot of the bed elevated 12 to 16 inches. Choice C and D are drained with patient in long sitting position or leaning forward over the pillow in the sitting position. Now let's move to question number 140. A female patient with chronic pelvic inflammatory disease is ordered to complete a course of therapy that consists of various modalities including DP treatment. The patient is ordered to have a deep modality that involves application of high radio frequency electrical current demonstrated at 27 megahertz. The patient is ordered which of the following modality? Option A. Short wave diatomy. Option B. Ultrasonography. Option C. Microwave diatomy. Option D. Radiant heat. And the answer is Option A. Short wave diatomy. Explanation to this question is Short wave diatomy includes application of high radio frequency electrical currents. Ultrasonography uses high frequency acoustic vibration. Microwave diatomy utilizes a form of electromagnetic radiation. So that's all for today. If you have any doubts, please mention in the comment box. For further learning, keep in touch with the channel. See you in the next part. Bye bye. See you.